Looking up at the sky, searching for a lost high. He rejected the way of worshiping gods of clay. Prophet Ibrahim knew that Allah was near, and that the heart of a Muslim is sincere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this evening's live edition of Hasten to Goodness. You guys do give us a call. Those numbers should appear on your screen. And we're here to answer any question that you may have. Um, indeed, in this month of Ramadan, we're live here addressing interesting and beneficial issues that affect all Muslims worldwide. And uh, Sheikh Kareem is relating them to the month of Ramadan. And we have another interesting topic uh, for you. But before I introduce you to the topic, let me introduce our Sheikh. Sheikh Kareem, thank you for being with me. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Sheikh, it's pleasure, always. Uh, really, it's my pleasure. And uh, Sheikh, I understand that you want to talk about charity this evening. And I think it's a wonderful topic because many of our viewers in the Western world, perhaps, like myself, we grew up a certain way where, in all honesty, we didn't really think about giving to others. We learned to generate money to get a good job. If I do give in charity, it's because I'm going to write it off on my taxes. In effect, when I became Muslim, I had to reprogram myself to think about others more. Um, so perhaps we can speak about uh, the, the charity, giving to others, especially in the month of Ramadan. Um, the best of people another wording the most beloved of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are most beneficial to people that you, you benefit others you, uh, that's what Islam is all about uh, you know we, 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 we normally uh, define Islam uh, based on the five pillars, Hadith ibn Umar, the known, the five uh, pillars of Islam, Shahadatain and Salah and Zakah, fasting and Hajj. But look, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, given another definition, Al-Muslimu um, man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadih. The true Muslim is the one whom the rest of the Muslims are saved protected from his tongue and from his hand. Uh, look at this now. The least that you can do, that you do not harm others, the least. But if you want to be proactive, you benefit others. Okay. Now, when you do this, you can do this with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon you. Whether it is your wealth, it doesn't have to be Restricted to that. Great point. It can be your time. It can be your effort. It can be your knowledge. It can be showing people the way to goodness. Uh, letting them know. Uh, and that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Addallu ala al khair. The one who is uh, showing people the way to goodness receives the reward of them doing it. Okay. Uh, that's what Islam is all about, is about benefiting others. Well, Sheikh, before we go to break, I would like to mention one point. Uh, sometimes it goes against our human nature to give. For example, if I have money in my pocket, I have $100, and I want to give 50 to this charity, it's difficult to give. So how can we need to, perhaps we can speak out, we can reprogram ourselves to understand that this, is, this mathematical equation is with Allah, and perhaps there'll be some return on that. How can we, how can we understand that? It is true we were uh, somehow uh, fashioned uh, by inclination uh, to like to possession. Right, to be a bit greedy, miserly. <laughs> to be, to hold, to, to, to withhold. Right. I think that's the verb here. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّةً And you love wealth so much love, jamma. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ Mankind is so much in love with, with, with al-khayr here, meaning wealth too in that context. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلِكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّي إِذَا لَأَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ قَتُورًا Say, if you possess the storage of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, 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 the bounties, the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you will withhold right. because mankind is cheap, as we say, stingy. The, the, uh, that is why when you spend, 
you have conquered yourself. Okay. And Ramadan, uh, Malik, is the best occasion. Ramadan is the best time. Uh, Ibn Abbas narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be so generous throughout the year. But when Ramadan is here, his generosity would increase. And he described it in a way that his generosity would be like a wind driven by rain. Uh, what does it mean? That he would give those who need and those who do not need. Uh, I think Ramadan is a good occasion for us to break uh, through ourselves and to give and hopefully the episode will help tonight. Okay, well thank you so much, Sheikh. Uh, you guys stay tuned for more. Hasten to goodness. Sheikh Kareem is going to be breaking down uh, the meaning of charity and spreading goodness in this Muslim ummah, umma, especially in the month of Ramadan. So you guys stay tuned. Welcome back to Hasten to Goodness. I'm joined by Sheikh, Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid, uh, six nights a week live, you guys, on this program. So continue to stay tuned and don't, forgive, don't forget to give us a call. Th those phone numbers should appear on your screen. The Sheikh is here ready to answer all of your questions. And of course, we're talking about charity this evening. Uh, Sheikh Kareem, thank you for staying with me. Uh, yes, well, Sheikh, we have an interesting, I have an interesting question I'd like to ask you. In this day and age, many of us living in, in industrialized countries like America and Europe, uh, perhaps somebody might say, look, if people are in need, they can, there are services available for them. There's nothing that I can do to benefit my community. This is taken care of by the federal government. I don't have a sense of communal obligation because they don't need my, my wealth or my services. So it's not really an obligation on me. What do you, what do you say to this idea, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Um, you know, it's, it's fine that the uh, community would take care of um, the poor and the needy. And, and this is something that should be uh, uh, really uh, an Islamic principle. Okay. I need to remind you, Malik, and, and remind the viewers that the first challenge which faced the first state or the leader of the Muslims after the death of Rasulullah was the right of the poor. Never uh, been uh, advocated for uh, in that manner. I'm hinting to uh, the uh, people who accepted Islam and right after the death of the Prophet they stopped paying the zakah, which is the right of the poor in the wealth of the rich. Right. They said, listen, you know, we believe in la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and we will pray, uh, we will do hajj if we're able to, but uh, to pay zakah, we were commanded to pay it to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They basically uh, kind of misinterpret the verse saying, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً Take from their wealth a sadaqa. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is no longer alive. Then we do not have to pay that. Imagine right. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu mm -hmm. stand up and says, by Allah, I will fight them for this. I, not, not because uh, uh, he wants their money, no. Because it's an obligation right. about every Muslim to take care of those who are less fortunate in the society, in the community. Fa if we're talking about the United States, if we're talking about America, yes, there is some uh, uh, system there where uh, uh, services, are available. services are available. But we need to remember also that there are uh, areas where the federal government, where the uh, the state cannot contribute to, like the building of masajid, uh, like the, um, the uh, uh, taking care of schools, Islamic schools, Certainly. Uh, like uh, institutions like hospitals, uh, like uh, uh, right. hospitals, like uh, other institutions which are Islamic because of the principle of the separation between the church and the state. Right. Then the reliance upon the wealth of the individual 
the Muslim community. the Muslim community uh, is there. Right. Uh, Certainly. Uh, yeah. uh, like here, you know, and it's it's really a little bit vice versa in in, in, in the, the depth of the Muslim world that you find uh, the government taking care of the masajid. Uh, yeah. uh, providing schools uh, for yeah. the, for the general public, but at the same time they do not advocate for the poor and the needy. Good point. Um, uh, they would fight the, the wealthy and the rich. Uh, they would jail them for not paying the tax, but they do not have an organized effort to collect the zakah for the poor and the needy. So y Good you point. find the uh, you know the it, it's it's very interesting. And counter and kind of counter like yes yeah. counter like. Uh, well, opposite. over here they do it because they don't want other people controlling the mind of the the, the, the people right. regarding the you know the, the 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 breacher and so forth. Right. The, the speakers they they want the domination, the religious right. authority to yes. be, um, you know, monopolized uh, with the state to be under the supervision of the state. Yeah. They, they are doing that's the initial thing because that's a way for people to uh, to you know to platform for to, to, to for their causes or for for their cause. Right. I mean, uh, we understand, but at the same same time, they 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 refuse to establish an organized um, uh, uh, institutions to collect the uh, right of the poor and the wealth of the rich, uh, which is the contrary to the United States. That's a great point. But in both circumstances, Sheikh, you mentioned zakat and communal obligation. W you link those together, which is interesting. So, would you say paying zakat and giving charity? Obviously, it's good because it's it's part of our religion and it helps the people in need. But also establishes a bond between people also doesn't it not just a bond uh, actually it protects you as a wealthy from the harm of those subhanallah uh, it's really uh, imagine this khudh min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim biha take from their wealth the the, the rich and, and and the wealthy a sadaqa a, a charity which will purify them purify who purify the giver from Subhanallah. stinginess Subhanallah. you see when you right. give Right. You have, like we said at the very beginning of the show, you have conquered yourself. Right. You have uh, conquered that, that your nafs, yourself, your. Listen, your shuh, being stingy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِي فَأُولَئِكَ هُمْ مُفْلِحُونَ If you're able to safeguard yourself from the stinginess of yourself, you're indeed a successful <laughs> person. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, I think about that. So, you, so this is number one. You conquered yourself, but also it does something else to the, to the, to, to, to the receiver of the, of the sadaqah. Uh, it will purify his nafs from envying you. So great point. Because uh, when the, the poor see the need, uh, when the poor and needy see the, the wealthy, wealthy and the rich uh, giving and sharing, they would love for you to uh, to uh, to have more. Oh, point. Allah, give him more so he can yeah. give me more. Subhanallah. We'll get back to this point, Sheikh, uh, mm -hmm. if we can take this phone mm -hmm. call from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Go right ahead. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, brother, man, I just had a question regarding the topic that you guys said yesterday regarding Zikr. Okay, I have one hadith here. And from a reliable source, but I just want to verify from the Sheikh. Go ahead. Uh, the, hadith, the hadith states that uh, if a person sits after Fajr and says, La ilaha illallah wa ahdu wa sharika la ulla ulmu al-khu wa la halhamdu ya wa ahdu wa ahdu wa ahdu wa ahdu wa ala kulli shayin kareer 100 times before bending his lips, he will be the best man to offer good deeds on the earth that day, except those who did more than he did. Is this a uh, sahih hadith or... So I just want to verify from the Sheikh. You want to verify if the hadith yes. is authentic? Yes, yes, sir. it's authentic. The hadith is very authentic, mashallah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for your call, brother. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> it's the first time somebody grades a hadith like that. Very authentic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's very good, Sheikh. Very Ex good. Experts of hadith would laugh at me. What is he saying? It's <laughs> yes. And we have another phone call, Sheikh, yes, so if you can keep sure, that question sure. in mind. Yes, we have yes. a phone call from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for calling. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa First, I want to say Allah wa to Muhammad. And second, I want to welcome Sheikh Zainal Zid in the episode. And I want to tell him something that I love him for the sake of Allah. And thank him very much for the efforts that he's making to serve the religion of the whole world. And thank you very much for that. And the third thing is, uh, yeah, and the third thing is I want to say uh, congratulations to the all Muslim Muslim nations in the whole world because of Ramadan. And uh, we are now in Ramadan. And they have a chance, the opportunity to increase their the good. I mean, the their things and stuff like that. Uh, the, the last thing I want to say is that um, when the charity comes to the hand of the leaders, it, it makes 
uh, an effect on their hearts very, very strong, which means that you enter uh, even uh, 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 happiness to the heart of the uh, leading. You don't know uh, the people who give the, the charity. You don't know how how uh, how huge or how much it is the happiness that you get to the leading heart. And thank you very much for receiving my phone call. I wish you all your efforts, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother, for your call. And I believe, really, that last comment was going in line with what you yes, said, Sheikh. You were saying well. you, you can't even understand how happy someone is to receive charity. I mean, that's what you were saying, basically. Yeah, you bring joy uh, upon, you know, the... You, you really change the uh, the spectrum of, of, of the society. Um, I, I want to say Jazakallah khairan, brother Muhammad, for his uh, kindness and, and kind words. And we we, uh, we condone what he said. Uh, MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. Uh, the first question, yes, the hadith is authentic. Back uh, to the first, okay. Yes, the hadith is authentic. Uh, I believe it's in uh, Al-Bukhari, if I'm not mistaken. And the hadith states that if you recite this dhikr a hundred times. If time, you say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu yuhyi wa meetuha ala kulli shayin qadir, 100 times, um, uh, all your sins are erased, and uh, you, no one else would uh, uh, gain your status uh, except somebody who did more than that. So, uh, Sheikh, we're going to take a quick look at a report discussing the topic of charity, and then we will come right back, inshallah. You guys stay tuned, check out this report, and don't go anywhere. Islam is a religion of love and harmony which promotes charity through true selflessness. Charity is in the heart of every Muslim believer. But charity is not restricted to simply giving money to the poor people. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was God's final messenger to all of mankind. He was a true role model in every aspect of life. And with respect to charity, he said, every act of goodness is a charity. Muhammad taught us that every good act, no matter how big or small, is in fact considered an act of charity. Throughout his lifetime, he left us with many beautiful examples. And from these examples, he taught us that to utter a kind word to somebody is an act of charity. To help somebody in a difficulty is an act of charity. To remove something harmful from the public path is considered an act of charity. Even something as small and simple as smiling at another person is in fact considered an act of charity. Another act of charity recommended by Muhammad, peace be upon him, was that of feeding a hungry person. And by this recommendation, Muslims seek any opportunity to feed other people. And in the Muslim world, it is a regular practice for Muslims to organize the preparation of meals for the poor people in the community, or for the Muslims to organize the distribution of food parcels into the impoverished areas. So what is the best act of charity? Well, Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us that the best act of charity is that which continuously benefits the people. And in this respect, he encouraged the planting of trees from which a person, an animal, or a bird would later benefit from. Based upon this principle, Muslims from all over the world have rallied together to provide organized welfare. Rather than giving a glass of water to one thirsty person, Muslims have helped to build wells and water systems all across Asia and Africa. Similarly, providing somebody a proper education has the potential to lead one person to provide continuous benefit to many people for generations to come. And this is one of the reasons why Muslims will promote the teaching profession. It is also one of the reasons why Muslims are actively engaged in the building of schools. All these acts of charity bring much happiness to the hearts of the Muslims. The motivation behind these actions is to express gratitude to their Lord for his guidance, mercy and blessings. Through these acts of charity, Muslims seek to earn the pleasure of their Lord and in the end hope to earn God's promise of everlasting rewards in the hereafter. Welcome back to Hasten the Goodness. Hope you enjoyed that report. We are still live, so give us a call. Uh, Sheikh Kareem, can I take your thoughts and comments on the, that report? I, I truly believe that he summed up our show tonight. Um, the fact that um, acting righteously is not just limited to salah, zakah, and, uh, I'm sorry, salah and, and fasting. Ra uh, rather, it's benefiting others. And benefiting others does not have to be only limited to money. Uh, one's wealth. 
because not all of us are able to give. Great point. Uh, some of us are actually in qualified need. more to, to receive because we're so much in need. Uh, therefore, uh, you removing a harmful object from the street uh, is a sadaqa. You smiling in the face of your brother is a sadaqa. You helping your brother to lift his heavy uh, load is a sadaqa, uh, and so forth. Fa but really, the, 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 the one thing that we, we need to pay attention to as Muslims, uh, and I know a lot of our viewers are watching this uh, overseas, uh, meaning in, in, in a non-Muslim uh, community, this is where our work of da'wah uh, will be more uh, effective. effective. Uh, you know, something that really um, saddened me so much, Malik, uh, if you recall, I think four, uh, four uh, or five years ago, more or less, there was a tsunami in, in Japan or, or somewhere in, right, right. in, in, in that area, uh, or an earthquake in Japan. And and uh, imagine all the missionary uh, organizations, they went there and, and they established their, uh, you know, they, 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 their, uh, their institutions or right, their organizations. organizations in order to help the poor and the needy. Where were the Muslims? Right. Uh, imagine all that charity work, that missionary work uh, done in Africa. SubhanAllah. It's done on the basis of, of charity, uh, right. building uh, institutions like, uh, like um, I'm sorry, hospitals, like schools. Right. Uh, and, and basically telling the people this is from Jesus, you know. Right. So where are we? We have to wake up. Where are we? Right. You know, and, and a, a, a project like a food bank. Uh, like you mentioned. Imagine the first Jewish rabbi who accepted Islam. He tells us his story, uh, one of the things that triggered him to accept Islam. I'm talking about Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an. He said that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa migrated from Mecca to Medina, and uh, I wanted to go and check him out. He, he was very well versed with the Torah, and he knew that uh, there is a Messenger who is to rise at this time, uh, and that would be the place where he would migrate to. So when I approached him, I looked at him, from his eyes, I can tell that he is someone who does not lie. SubhanAllah. He does not lie, just from his eyes. But here are the first words which I heard coming out of his mouth. You know what he said? Ayyuha nas O people, at'imu ta'am, feed the hunger. Wasilu huh? al-arham, uphold your kinship ties. Wasallu bil-layl, wa'afshu salam and spread peace. Spread peace amongst you. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسِ وَنِيَامِ And pray at night while people are asleep, uh, you enter Jannah in, in, in a peaceful. SubhanAllah. Imagine these are the first words that Abdullah ibn Salam, the first Jewish rabbi who accepted Islam, who became a Muslim. These words got to him, got to him, that this is a religion, uh, is tuned towards, uh, you know, uh, helping the, uh, uh, the poor and the needy and, 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 and so forth. Uh, you know, there uh, a lot of, uh, and I've done this before, I do fundraise a lot in, in, in the United States, and, and uh, a lot of the uh, non-Muslims are amazed that how in the world would you give, would you find somebody who gives 10,000, 15, or 20,000 yeah. uh, just towards the building of, of, of a school, towards the building of a masjid, they are amazed of that. They don't realize that we, we do have so much incentive in our religion for us to do this. Okay. For I, I want to say, here is the point uh, in conclusion, that uh, if we want <coughs> our da'wah, uh, our calling others to right. Islam to be more effective, right. it must be accompanied with charity work, okay. not just the words, right. not just, right. you know, that we need, uh, we need to Action. be uh, proactive in the sense we need to help people. Right. Right. You can't just go to needy and, and poor people and talking to them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right. without offering uh, Certainly. Uh, some solutions for their, their problems. problems. And uh, this is in a way, a good way to make da'wah, okay. to call people to Islam. Certainly, and where I come from in San Francisco, this is well known, churches give out a lot of uh, free meals, and, and that's a great point, Sheikh, that we need to accompany our da'wah with, with something right. like this, to say the least. But I want to go back to the, uh, the the point that I was trying to make, that if the, w you know, let me just tell you a, a beautiful story that will uh, uh, serve that goal. But but the viewers, they need to give me their attention for just two, three minutes so they understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Uh, Al-Hadith fil bukhari uh, wa Muslim, Hadith Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, uh, that uh, somebody from Bani Israel, from the children of Israel, he wanted to give a sadaqah at night in secret. Uh, of course, you know, the sadaqah in secret is, is very rewarding. Uh, 
الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم when he uh, mentioned uh, those seven individuals or seven uh, types of, of Muslims uh, who will be shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he mentioned that one of them who given a sadaqah with his right hand that his left did not know uh, basically that you give somebody Secret. a sadaqah no 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 to that extent that you give him a sadaqah and you don't know who received the sadaqah so that person wanted to do that. He wanted to go at night when it is dark at night and he wanted to place that sadaqah in the hand of somebody he, d he doesn't know. Okay. This is what is meant that his left did not know right. what his right given. Okay. Uh, and, and this is the ultimate uh, level of sincerity. Right. Because normally when you give somebody, you know, and, and even so it's between you and him, there is still that level of expectation that, you know, I've given you a sadaqah. You right, know, you, <laughs> right. You know, right. You, you, That's a good point. You know, so yeah. he wanted even to avoid that. Yeah. So he probably. wanted to avoid that. Purely for the sake of Allah. Purely for yeah. the sake of Allah that he doesn't even want to know who received his sadaqah. <laughs> yeah. This is the top of the line. <laughs> yeah, mashallah, yeah. So he went out at night and he placed his sadaqah in the hand of somebody. In the morning, the whole town. Okay, we'll take that phone call. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, sorry. I'm really enjoying this. I need to <laughs> We'll come back to it. Yeah. Okay, Sister Iman, Iman from Algeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Thank you for calling. Wa alaikum How are you doing? We're doing great. Thank you for giving us a call. Go ahead, ask your question, Sister. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm living in Algeria. I called before, and I moved here from America. I'm today, and I'm happy here, but I'm living as a housewife. And I don't know many people here, and it, and I don't go out too much because, you know, like I said, I'm an housewife. And I'm wondering what can I do from my position in terms of getting, giving sadaqah and giving charity? Or what can I do from the home? And what are my responsibilities as a woman in giving sadaqah? Really, that's a wonderful question. Thank you for sharing that. And inshallah, the sheikh will, will answer you. Thank you, sister, uh, for that call. Uh, may Allah bless you. That's a wonderful question, Sheikh. If she, she's free, she's at home, she says, and she wants to know what can she do to benefit other people. I think that's amazing because uh, time is often more valuable than money. Yeah. Do you want to answer this now? Jaza yeah, oh. we, we'll answer her. Okay. Um, uh, but let's go back to the hadith and okay. we'll, we'll come to her question, inshallah. Okay. We'll answer Sister Iman. Jazallah khairan. Uh, she's a regular uh, <laughs> viewer, viewer <Hamdila. laughs> so she will, uh, she will uh, bear, with, uh, bear, uh, bear, bear, uh, yeah. bear with us, inshallah. inshallah. So, uh, he placed the hand of some, the, the sadaqah in the hand of somebody. In the morning, the whole town started saying, Ah, oh, man, last night, guess what? A prostitute. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that's the, the, the word. Bad word. Received the sadaqah. Imagine a prostitute. Right. Someone, someone who uh, uh, sells herself. For money. For money. Uh, he, she makes m money by Selling committing herself. that sin, uh, adultery. So the man assumed that his sadaqah was not accepted. His sadaqah went into the wrong hand. So he became disappointed. But here he is, you know, he had that strong will and he said, I'm going to try again tonight. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again tonight. So he went out at night again, once more, and he placed his sadaqah, his, his money, his donation, in the hands of somebody. Of course, he didn't know. In the morning, the whole town started saying, Ah, oh, man, the thief, the one who is stealing our money, received the sadaqah last night. Thief. <laughs> right. Oh, man, what is going on here? You know, he, he, Depressed. He, he took this as a sign that Allah doesn't want to accept my sadaqah. So he said, you know what? I'm going to try for the last time tonight. This is the last time. So he goes out at night again. And he places his sadaqah, the whole town in the morning. They said, what? The wealthiest man in town received the sadaqah last night. He became so disappointed, depressed. He went to sleep. One of the wording that he saw a vision. Another wording that Allah sent to him an angel. And this would happen to the children of Israel. You know, the children of Israel, they, the, things like this would happen to them. Look, look what the angel said to him. Ya hada, o so and so. Your three sadaqahs, your three donations have been accepted. Imagine this, and this is what I want the viewers to pay attention to. Imagine to that town, to that village, before this man deciding to do this. You got a wealthy person, a wealthy person who is very wealthy and rich, 
who is not spending. Because later on, when the angel explained to him, he said this, the thief was stealing because he was need. And your sadaqah fulfilled his need. He is no longer stealing. stealing. So your sadaqah stopped him from stealing. The prostitute was committing this heinous act because she was in need. And now because of your sadaqah, she does not need anymore and she stopped. Look, 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 look. Here's what I want the viewers to pay attention to. The wealthy was so stingy. He was not sharing his wealth. He was not giving out his wealth. And when he saw somebody out there who is wanting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going out at night, not even expecting the appreciation of the society, yeah. now he decided to do what? To spend like him. So now, what caused this community to have a thief, to have a prostitute? What? The man who was the wealthy with hill with withholding his wealth right stinginess that's why that is why the prophet وسلم, warned us against stinginess because it will destroy the community it will destroy the society now because of the goodness of this man now the wealthy will begin spending again now the society will be protected from the evil and this is what we, what's what we want to, to, to focus on because when we do this, we certainly <laughs> protect our community from a lot of evil when the, uh, the, the, the wealthy, wealthy and the rich uh, share their uh, wealth. Inject their wealth. that into the community. Sheikh, we have to take a short break. We'll be right Ka back. All right. Sister Iman, so we don't want to forget. Oh, we won't. We'll get it right. back after the break. You guys stay okay. tuned for more Hasten to Goodness with Sheikh Reem Abu Zaid. Welcome back to Hasten to Goodness. In this second segment with Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid, we're going to be answering your phone calls. Uh, so first on the list is Sister Iman, and the rest of you guys uh, and ladies as well, give us a call and ask the Sheikh any question you might have, especially concerning the month of Ramadan, and those phone numbers should appear on your screen, inshallah. Sheikh Kareem, in the first segment, we had Sister Iman from Algeria. Yes. She yes. said, look, I'm at home. I have time to give. How can I essentially use my skill set? What can I do with my time uh, to help other people, to give in charity? Well, like we, uh, we mentioned, uh, our dear sister, that uh, if you do not possess the wealth, uh, yourself, your time, right. uh, what is known to be volunteering? Right. Uh, she can definitely volunteer at home uh, to help. Um, I can tell that her English, mashallah, is, is, native. Very, is very native. So she can actually uh, teach uh, kids uh, that we, uh, yes. you know, like, like English volunteer t volunteering to yes. do that. Um, she can help the uh, community, uh, right. you know, uh, in her uh, small circle, right. uh, inshallah. Mashallah, also, I think our sisters need a lot of uh, sisters like herself to teach Islam to them. And, and, and right, uh, certainly. Uh, to, to, uh, so she can actually end up teaching uh, other right. sisters about Islam and, and, and so forth. But definitely, uh, she can benefit others, you know. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that if you remove a harmful object from the street, I mean, uh, you Something helping so removing simple. harm from uh, from the coll collecting the trash from around your community, right. for example, or organizing an, uh, an effort to do that. Right. Um, something like that, I mean, uh, of that nature, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Sheikh. I mean, it's something that perhaps we think is small and insignificant, it isn't because it, it builds community ties, doesn't it? And this is the point that you're trying you to make. You know, you never know, you know, what is small and what is big. That's good what point. really matters is, is sincerity. Right, right. Uh, really, what, what really matters is, is sincerity. Uh, 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 therefore, Allah uh, the Prophet وسلم, warned us against this. Actually, one of the things that uh, uh, becomes an obstacle uh, uh, most of the time in, the fa uh, in our way of doing good, uh, of doing charity work, that we belittling it. Oh, that's not going to do nothing, you know. Right. Uh, that is why لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا. Do not belittle uh, any goodness that you can do. Uh, even if you uh, meet your Muslim brother uh, with a smiley, uh, you know, face, cheerfulness, face, happiness. cheerfulness, happiness, and you know, we, we always say that your teeth are not aura. You know, you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, That's a good. Point. You can, can smile. Show, you can smile. You can show. <laughs> even you know, yeah. you know something about uh, something about uh, Muslims is when 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 they are around other Muslims, 
they really have that that grumpy, that grumpy face, right, face. Yeah. but when they meet other uh, non-muslims they always even they do a plastic smile you know right they, right so so uh, what i want to say is 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 uh, ch you know the, the work of, of 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 charity is not just uh, money. Uh, uh, money it's it's it, it can be other things and you never know you never know uh, i, I want to tell you something uh, you know i uh, even doing it doing doing uh, good work or, 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 or helping animals. We read that hadith all the time that a woman who used yeah. to be a prostitute, again, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, wha like what happened to, the, to this woman? Imagine, she was traveling in the desert huh, and then she was so thirsty. She felt uh, so thirsty and she saw a wheel. So she went down the wheel and she had a drink. When she uh, went up, she saw a dog who's so thirsty to the extent the dog is licking the sand from thirst. Now, here's what she did, because a lot of the viewers may not pay attention to, to the efforts she put in this. She said, for sure that dog uh, is experiencing what I have experienced uh, before uh, me going down and taking a drink. Right. So she went down the well again. And she took out her shoe and she filled it with water. You see, for her to come up, she has to climb. Right. So where she's going to put the shoe? Allah subhanahu in, her, in her mouth, filled with water. Yeah. And then she giving the dog a drink. Imagine this. Because of the, a lot of the people say she was, you know, we know that she went to Jannah because of this. Subhanallah. She went to Jannah. But how? Because of this act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at the level of her sincerity and look at the level of her com commitment and, and conviction and, and the efforts yes. that she put. Because of this, Allah forgiven her what she done in the past and guided her to repent from prostitution. And now she straightened out, she became a righteous, pious woman and she died like this and she went to Jannah. That's how we understand this hadith. Just to, to, to uh, a story that I, I, I read Look, look at this, uh, just to show that the, 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 the brothers, when you do charity work, subhanAllah, one of the, you receive the best reward in this world, that guidance, you receive guidance. Look at this, a woman, a woman, uh, uh, you know, a Christian woman, uh, one of, uh, this story happened during the time of our righteous predecessors. So uh, uh, one of the scholars used to pass by her every day in the morning, she would wake up, and she would go and she would feed the birds. She would feed the birds. huh? Yeah. So the man would <coughs> look at her, listen, you know, this act is wonderful. This is a good act, but it will not benefit you because you're not a Muslim. We know that for the, the, the notarization right. for the acts in the Day of Judgment is right. La ilaha illallah Muhammad right, Rasulullah. Right. And for Muslims, you must also have salah. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is not gonna benefit you. It, it's a good act, it's not gonna benefit you uh, if you accept Islam, this is going to be, you know, it's going to be good for you. I'm sure because at the end of Surah Al-Kahf, we have that ayah, right? Right. Okay, okay. Then, look at this now. Uh, the end of Surah Al-Kahf, that you need to have Tawheed for your righteous deed to be accepted. Later on, maybe five, six, seven years later, he was doing around the, uh, Tawaf around the Kaaba. Guess what? He spotted the woman. He saw her doing Tawaf around the Kaaba. That means she's a Muslim. Right. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. That means she got guided. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. He asked her this question. What got you here? Yeah. You know what she said? Feeding the birds. Allah. <laughs> because it put love in her heart and guided, Allah because, guided her. F you see, because of this act. Yeah. Uh, 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 last year, I was in, in a convention in December in, in Chicago. The, uh, I think, ICNA something convention there. And I heard that story. But this is a true story, Shay? True story. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, listen to that story. This is a real true story. <laughs> yeah. There is an American man, American man, all his life, what he did, he would go to these uh, countries where there is uh, some uh, uh, sort of uh, drought or even war, civil war. Right. And he would uh, uh, bring young uh, kids as orphans and he would take care of them. His job, he, he just, he's focused on what? He's a Christian, he's not a Muslim. Okay. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to that Muslim country and he brings that grown-up boy a little bit and he takes care of that orphan. So the boy arrives to his home in, 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 in the United States and guess what? The boy was brought up to, to pray and, 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 and to recite the Quran and so forth. MashaAllah. The man was, was almost like 80 something years. Imagine this. So he saw the boy, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, I'm praying. This is Salah. Who's Allah? Allah. <laughs> yes, 
he became a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. He accepted Islam because of that boy. And you <laughs> that's amazing. Because that's of that act, yeah. he accepted Islam. So just to, to tell yeah. the brothers and the sisters that subhanallah, whenever, whenever you, 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 you give, Allah will give you back. Not necessarily wealth, not necessarily status, but he will give you what will give you the hereafter. Okay. Imagine this man, 80 years, he's a non-Muslim. Yeah. 80 years. And because of that little boy that he took care of, of him, right. uh, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him out of, uh, out of, 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 of disbelief and, and he, uh, his potential to go to Jannah are, are, are high, uh, subhanallah, right. because of... That is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ana wa kaf, I am, hadith al Bukhari, I am an, and the one who takes care of an orphan like this, uh, like this, in Jannah, like this, in Jannah. And, and the person who takes care of a widow or a miskeen, look at this, he has the status of someone who does jihad in the cause of Allah, prays the hajjud every night, fast every day. الساعي على الأرملة والمسكين كالمجاهد في سبيل الله القائم الليل الصائم النهار. Imagine this. الحديث البخاري والمسلم. Imagine this. Why? Because we're taking care of others. We're taking care of them. Whether it is with wealth, whether it is with with with, with efforts, whether it is with knowledge, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will always bless you. And this is what we started the show with. With خير الناس, the best of people in the sight of Allah are those who are the most beneficial to others. Okay. And this is the best way to give da'wah. So and we ask Allah to be amongst those. Inshallah, and Sheikh, we only have about a minute left. Perhaps we can finally close the episode by saying, look. Ramadan is a proof that you've increased your acts of charity and goodness so we can perhaps, it's a, it's, a, it's a proof against us that we should continue this after the month of Ramadan as well. If you're doing good now, try to keep it up after, after the month is over. Like we, we mentioned at the intro that uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used okay. to show more than what he used to show uh, throughout the year. Okay. Ibn Abbas says Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be very generous. That's all the year round. All the year, but in Ramadan, more. He would sky racket, they yeah. say. Okay. Uh, likewise, us, we should increase our generosity, okay. our giving, our, uh, <coughs> our <coughs> charitable uh, works uh, in Ramadan, but it should not stop after Ramadan. Okay. Because the people will still be needing, the people will, st will still be uh, expecting uh, your good from you. Uh, good from you. Uh, we need to maintain that. We need to maintain that. Because the best of deeds, Malik, the best of deeds are those which are done in a uh, consistent, consistent way. Okay, inshallah, Sheikh. Yes. And before we close, can you give us a hint to some other topics for the viewers at home who are following our series? Uh, what kind of topics do you want to address in the next in the upcoming episodes, inshallah? Well, I, I really want to wanna, wanna talk about hastening to uh, repentance, uh, hastening to uh, tolerance, you know, being tolerant with one another. Great. Um, I think we uh, we should have a, a show about zakatul fitr, inshallah. Right. Uh, this is uh, something that we uh, we should take care of. Um, you know, um, I think it's important that we we, we focus on orphans. Great. Uh, in the in the Muslim world right now, we Oof. do have a lot of uh, war zones. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fathers are being killed uh, killed in this. Look at the, uh, how many refugees we have in, in Syria. Yeah, certainly. L look in, in, in Iraq now. Oh, certainly. Uh, look in Palestine. In the millions. In, 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 in Africa. In, yeah. in, uh, I think we need to talk about orphans. And, okay, and, uh, let's and do it, Sheikh. Inshallah, bismillah. Because I, I, I recently saw some stats, uh, UN stats. It's the, the number of refugees now actually in millions. Uh, so let's talk about it, inshallah. It's sad. It's, it's sad. sad. So we need to address these issues. But again, it's, a, it's, oh, it's always a chance for us to to show our goodness and, and, and hopefully we'll be out there for them, inshallah. Okay, thank you so much, Sheikh Kareem, for your time. I certainly appreciate it. And uh, you guys at home, thank you for staying tuned to Hasten to Goodness. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, inshallah. And please, you guys, don't forget uh, to give us a call, ask the Sheikh any question that you may have on your mind, and uh, he will answer you, inshallah. So until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Up at the sky, searching for the most high. He rejected the way of worshipping gods of clay. Prophet Ibrahim knew that Allah was near and that the heart of a Muslim is sincere. Under the hot burning sun, he declared God is one. 
Though with stones on his chest, easy man would not rest. The more I think, do that right will conquer all. And the heart of a Muslim must be strong.